In this video challenge of Civilization 6 New Frontier Pass, we are going to be trying and attempting to win a sub 80 turn domination victory on Deity difficulty. I don't even know if that is possible, but I am fairly certain that I can win a 80 turn domination victory, which is about 20 minutes on Deity, which is the hardest difficulty in Civilization 6, and we are playing who I think is the best civilization, or Civ that is up for the challenge in Tamiris of Scythia. If you would rather watch the entire game unedited and cut to prove that that I actually beat the game without save scumming. Link is either going to be in the description or it is going to be up on the screen, along with the Civilization 6 five minute time lapse of the Deity Domination Challenge that I'm going to be doing. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future challenges and I will see you all in the video. What is up and welcome back to a brand new video. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe. The goal is to be bigger than PewDiePie by the end of the week and I'd appreciate all the help I can get. Let's get into it. Now, unlike last time, this is a custom map as I am trying to win the game before turn 80. So we do have a natural wonder beside us. We're going to have a lot of horses and we're going to have a butt ton of spices and ancient ruins. It has taken me a while to get some of this footage. So I do know where most of the civilizations are going to spawn. I made sure to include, yes, there is Beowulf. That is the one hero I wanted. Actually, that's a lie. I do want another one. But yeah, there's the city of Prokrava beside the natural wonder. We are trying to get our city situated as fast as possible. Build order is going to be scout, double slinger, double builder, monument, and one last builder there at the end. Now for my technologies, I am going to be going, well, we'll see in a second, animal husbandry, into mining, into horseback riding, into irrigation, and then currency. This should give me enough money to sustain a massive army, and we are trying to get horses as fast as possible, so beelining them and then being able to chop them is the best possible thing. There is Poland, Thick Thighs herself, and her capital is towards the north, so we will move our warrior there after getting the ancient ruins. And there is Uluru, which is going to be absolutely useless this game. I do not have time to settle more cities. There's a scout. We are going to send him west, but the next ancient ruin does have a scout. So I could have cut more time from my build order if I just skipped the scout. But then again, I am not psychic, so I don't really blame myself. We are getting some different types of heroes, although none of them are really useful. The booster archery should help us. And there is Poland's capital of Krakow. And this slinger right here is going to be perfectly fine against the spearmen. Forest behind the river with a ranged attack, it is not even going to be close. Unit needs orders, we are going to move east because that's where everybody else is. And moving our scout west to find the last two civilizations. Spoiler alert, by the way, that civ right there is England. Slinger is going to actually attack, and then we'll have another Slinger come and flank him. Over here, we have met the Queen of England. I'm about to be king of that territory in a few turns, though. And there is the monk with the pegs as earplugs. There is Gitarja, the civ 6 wife who herself. And just like that, we have five civilizations met already. We're going to flank the Spearman and encampment with our Slingers before taking him out, before moving all our units to find every last capital we need. I will take your bathwater, Miss Gitarja. Thank you very much. Let's go take out this encampment and get a nice military tradition civic boost. We're going to go next turn, and then we are going to completely obliterate him. That is what you like to see from Barbarians. Barbarians are absolutely destroying Gitarja, but not me, though, because I'm going to go Discipline and God King for my first civics. Civic-wise now, I did not tell you what my beelining is. We're going to go military tradition into political philosophy, as that is all we need. We'll get military tradition boosted right now, and we got our builder. Let's get some horse resources going. And we're going to get another horse resource. We found another ancient rune with the slinger, which is absolutely perfect. And over here with the scout, we have met the last civilization, Menelik II, or the King of Top Hats, whatever one you like. We're going to go next turn now, and looking over here, we get a second builder. We'll move him right on top of that forest. Get a diamond mine to boost craftsmanship and increase production in our capital. With the slinger, we are just going to promote him with volley. And England doesn't like me. I mean, not many people like me, so I'm fine with that. And oh my god, that slinger is absolutely getting obliterated. We have to back him up. We're going to move to that horse resource with the builder. At least Katarja likes me. I guess that means we can be friends until I take you out. I mean, like, militarily. Anyways, we're going to move the slinger up north. And we do have a barbarian scout we are going to have to deal with. So I am going to bring some of my military units home. There is Addis Ababa, Ethiopia's capital. And that means we have found almost every single capital in this game. There is a meteor shower, which means a free war chariot or whatever those things are called. So I'm going to upgrade these slingers and then send them over there themselves. I will take your bathwater as well, England. Can't have too much of that. And I'm trying to auto-explore with the scout, but there are too many barbarians that keep getting in the goddamn way. So I start sending this guy up north, but 
There's barbarians there too. And next turn, we are going to try to get this guy out of the way. And this warrior is in a bad position as well. We'll get him out of the way. After the builder and poor Krava, I am going to go heroic tails to hopefully get that last hero that I need. With this builder, I'll move him down to the forest and get some more horses. We're making six horses per turn and we move the archer to get the meteorite. We're going to go take out that warrior because he's low and this scout will not leave my other scout alone. It is pitiful right now. After getting attacked by the slinger, I'm going to move this guy back and hopefully not die. And as you can see, I am in a cluster with me at the center of it. And there's another hero, not the one I need, but a promotion nonetheless. And here comes the barbarians from the southeast we saw earlier in this video. We're going to move this builder up on the forest. And here comes Poland trying to get me to believe in the way of God like a door-to-door -door priest missionary. I don't appreciate it, so I am going to take my anger out on that scout with the exclamation mark over his head. We're going to put all our builders to sleep until we get horses in the next 10 to 15 turns. And we don't have the hero we need, so we're going to go Heroic Tales one last time to hopefully get the hero we need. And our warrior made it out alive, which is great for us. And we're going to take out the scout with this scout, because that is scout on scout conflict. There's military tradition. We are going to put in maneuver to get those horsemen even faster than usual. We're going to get a pantheon fairly soon, so I'll keep God King in there and get out of the way. And there is the hero we needed. Finally, King Arthur. He will allow my scouts to become as strong as knights. We do get a chariot from the meteor site. And over here, we do have barbarians coming in from the south. So we do have to move these guys down south to go counter the threat. Gonna go next turn, gonna get smacked, and is that another meteor? That is, so we are going to move both our scout up north with the archer, but it does seem like it's in the middle of barbarian territory, so uh, we're gonna take some sacrifices. Yeah, this scout's not making it out alive, I guarantee it. Uh, we can move him out of the way, which we will. We're gonna move the scout down south, and this chariot is an absolute beast. We'll heal after attacking. I'm looking around trying to settle a second city because you can only get one hero per city and I need two. I finally decided to settle a little bit west from here so I can get lots of choppable resources. And I am going to build the first hero in my second city because heroes do get more expensive. So building the first hero in a lower production city is best to finish as soon as possible. Katarsha is trying to give me more bathwater, but I have heard rumors that there's mercury in that shit, so I'm going to stop buying it from her. There's another Pantheon, and there is another Barbarian Scout we'll take out with the Archer. I was going to go God of the Forge, but I decided on God of Craftsmanship, because 3 production is better than 25% production towards units. I did the math. And over here, we are going to kill the Slinger, and then finally take it out with the War Chariot, spawning another War Chariot that we can use to help defend against the East. We are in a dangerous situation between two Barbarians. Let's hope they don't look at my Settler. And over here, we are going to get smacked, so I am going to send that chariot to take him out again before bringing our archer back home. And oh my god, they're coming in from the south. We gotta go defend that. We're gonna have to move that builder soon, but I see an opening with that scout, so we are going to get that city settled no problem. And we are going to found our first city, second city really, and immediately buy a monument before getting started on the first hero, which is going to be King Arthur first. We're going to attack that slinger from the east, defend with the chariot in the south, and let's get another builder so we can chop even more horse units out in the next turn. We're getting attacked from two fronts, so I guess we are taking on the role of Poland this game. We're going to do a lot better than they did historically though, because these barbarians are no match for my units. Finally, horseback riding will allow me to start building up my army. We're going to take the last few barbarians out with our three units. One of them did end up surviving, but I'll be able to take him out next turn. So we're going to get some horsemen. We're going to chop them out immediately with our builders. And what do you know, it's two horsemen for the price of mun. Thank you, Scythia. We are going to move these guys up north, but looking at all the military declarations, it does seem like England is the only one not at war, so I am going to send these horsemen to the east, because England is going to have a stronger military in virtue of not being at war with anybody. We do get two more horsemen in the next few turns. We're going to again send them towards England, and then I start realizing, you know what, I think I'm going to send these guys towards Poland because Poland has an extremely strong city in Krakow. It's going to take a while to take that city out. We're going to put more horsemen, and we are going to move our builders and chop them out. That is absolutely perfect. I love chopping in units. Makes things easier. We're going to go for the financer as our governor because her one thing gives you two gold for each population in your city, which should help any gold problems we might face. I'm going to send these scouts west to Addis Ababa because King Arthur can turn them into questing knights and make them a hundred times more powerful. 
We're going to keep asleep on that forest tile. And then Jay Harvarman wants my horses, and I decide I'm going to send them to him personally with two envoys like a very nice person. I decide that Poland can use my horses a little bit better, though, a little bit more. They need it more. So we are actually going to send these four horsemen towards Krakow to prepare against Poland. And we're going to send our auxiliary units, our archers, our chariots to go up against London because I feel like they're going to be the biggest problem we have to face. Hey, classical era golden age. There we go. I'm thinking that we need to go free inquiry because that is really the only thing we can make use of in this game. Could use pen, brush, and voice, but not really. Now England tells me to move my units from her border, and I do, like the little simp that I am. And King Arthur is finally here, so we can finally send our scouts west. And over here in our capital, we are going to come out with even more horsemen. We're going to send a trade to Krakow to start making a little bit more money. As I'm moving my units towards Poland's territory, you know, to prepare to conquer them, she does come out with a trade deal to give me some bathwater, which I gladly accept, before telling me to move my units from the border, and I tell her, sure, you know, like a liar. Anyways, next up we're going to move King Arthur to position, and man, Ethiopia's dealing with a butt-ton of barbarians. They don't even need my help to take him out. And yeah, we are going to... <laughs> that's not looking good for him right now. It's going to look a lot worse when I get some of my questing knights. But I'm going to fortify King Arthur for now as we get two more horsemen to come out. And finally decide to start building Beowulf, which is really the last thing I need for right now. I do decide to go recorded history and defensive tactics to get one last governor policy so I can get the two gold per population. And this is about the time where I try to make a joint war, which... Surprises me and actually ends up happening, so there is that. Now, England will move most of her military towards the north, and London and its 27 combat strength is going to be easy pickings. We're going to move our horsemen, and hey, what do you know? We can easily take this city right now. Could have surrounded the city in hindsight, but at this point, I didn't care. I like I played for like 20 hours before I finally got this really good game. In any case, this turn, we are going to completely take out this city, and we are going to, oh, well, maybe not this turn. We actually got cut this turn. We're going to take the city next turn with the one on the right, I believe. Yes, sir. And we are immediately going to raise it to the ground because I want everybody to know I am a piece of <laughs> Anyways, Beowulf is right here and ready to go. We are going to move him to Anger Thome and all our military units are now in position. England, getting bored of me not converting to Christianity, decides to denounce me, although it might have had to do with all the innocents I slaughtered by raising that last city. And there is a catapult, in other words, free practice for my horsemen units. We're going to attack the catapult, free kills, free money, free healing, and over here we are going to start irrigating some of these spices tiles so we can get a little bit more money. And here is Gatarja, she wants spices for... I'd rather have flat money, thank you very much. And that warrior did absolutely nothing to me. I'm not giving you any horses. I don't want you to get any thoughts about building any horsemen. So I'm not going to make any trade deals with you. It doesn't really matter because I think in the next few turns I end up declaring war on everybody. I decide to give my spices to England, but she does drive a hard bargain. So I settle for half the price and a sloppy toppy on top of that. In any case, we are going to attack. Oh my God, look at Krakow. It has walls, which is going to make things a hundred times harder. I am not waiting until catapults to go to war. In any case, we have Angerthum surrounded. We're going to pillage and Beowulf is going to start the attack. Not before he uses a special ability though, which allows me to take out the garrison unit, making this city a lot easier to take. And the one on the right is not going to be able to attack, neither is Beowulf. So I settle for attacking with two horseman shots instead, before deciding, you know what? I think it's time to get some questing knights going. There's a third scout. We are going to give him the special questing knight ability. I'm going to give the one on the south first because that guy is going to go down south and attack Malaysia along with the second scout towards the east. And King Arthur himself and the scout to the north are going to go and take out Addis Ababa. Cities are still pretty weak. Not too many people are building walls aside from Poland. I decided to take Jeharvim city and raise it again because... It's free real estate. And Menelik doesn't like me. Uh, it is what it is. He's going to die soon anyway. In any case, I make a few more questing knights before realizing that I can only do one per turn. So I end up moving this questing knight north and waiting one more turn to promote the last scout. Spoiler alert though, we are going to take Anger Thome this turn. I decide to attack with these three horsemen before sending Beowulf to go help against the siege in Poland. And just like that, that is our first capital captured. Only four more to go. Next up, we are going to declare war on Poland because I want those thighs for myself and I am coming. The city has walls though, but spoiler alert, they are dealing with massive barbarian issues. So they don't really have the military strength or capacity to defend my invasion. 
Uh, but I don't really have the siege units to take down their walls. So let's see who wins. And England doesn't like me, and that is the last straw. And Guitarja not liking me really puts a hole in my heart before I get political philosophy and am able to go for oligarchy immediately. Getting some conscription policies and I guess the plus one influence per turn, which is going to be useless. But at the same time, we get urban planning, so we are now making decent amount of money, and by decent, I mean enough to pay for all this military we have, and I decide to surround Poland as they are dealing with their barbarians. Beowulf will get there shortly, and looking at loyalty, it does look like that city is going to be done in eight turns. I was talking about Anger Thum, by the way. And I'm going to take King Arthur to promote that questing knight. I was going to send him to Poland, but it would take in 12 turns, and that's the lifespan of these questing knight units. So instead, I'm actually going to send this one down south to help with the invasion of Malaysia, just to make things a little bit easier. And in case they rebel, I can easily take them back with two questing knights instead of one. In any case, we now declare war against Menelik II, and decide to throw our Knights of the Round Table signature move on him. And yeah, the city is not going to last very long, as long as he doesn't build walls. But speaking of walls, we are just suiciding our units onto the city, and it is not looking too good so far, which is why I need Beowulf and a few more units. I'm debating about whether I should move that horseman unit or not. I'm going to promote my horsemen to coursers, and yeah, just like, like, we have to keep the city surrounded, and we have to just, just throw everything we have at it. We are going to lose units, but in the end, it'd be worth it, especially if we win before the turn 80 mark. So right now, we are going to move Beowulf west, and our path is blocked by even more barbarians. What a surprise, as I have to waste one of Beowulf's unique charges. And right now, we decide that, hey, no more waifu anymore. We're going to go take out Indonesia right now. And this questing knight alone with the warrior from Ethiopia ironically helps us surround the city, which will make it easier to take out. Speaking of Ethiopia, though, we are almost done with Addis Ababa. It should die in the next turn, even if they put up walls. And over here, we are going to go next turn and see what Poland does. It's just an absolute cluster up over here. This is going to be tough to take. We are getting slaughtered trying to scale the walls, and the walls are just stand- I don't- I don't know what to do at this point. I was trying to make a beeline for- well, not a beeline. After currency, I wanted to go for engineering, but I didn't have the science to keep up with that, and I knew for a fact that if I had to get engineering, it would have been game over at that point. As we declare war against England, who is not amused about my declaration of war, I decide to move all my units, and what do you know, most of her units are off finding the- J. Harvarman. I still don't know what his name is. I try, let's, let's hope I'm right, but I decide to move my units into position. Two war carts, two archers, a horseman, and a warrior should be more than enough to take out London. Over here, I decide to finally move that horseman west to support the invasion, as despite the fact that I'm losing a lot of health, I have Poland City to less than half health already, and I begin attacking Majapahit, even though I didn't surround the city because I'm an idiot, and I decide to finish off Addis Ababa with King Arthur. Perfect. Although it is going to have loyalty issues and I am going to have to retake it, I decide to attack Indonesia's units. And over here, I am going to begin attacking London. And over here, I'm going to begin losing my first units in the war to take out Poland, who has swordsmen, which sucks for me. Over here, I am just going to take a turn and move some units in position. I'm going to pillage as well because swordsmen are a match for horsemen, no doubt about it. Over here down south, we are going to begin our direct assault on London. I'm going to attack, and city isn't surrounded, but it should fall fairly easily. And over here in Majapahit, the second questing knight is almost here. And Addis Ababa does look like it is going to rebel very, very soon, so I do have to watch out for that. And not losing anything on the English front, that's good, that's good. Over here, I am going to get clobbered on the Polish front because walls and swordsmen and spearmen just aren't very fun. Now, I decide to move Beowulf into position, city surrounded. We can begin just going at that city with all the horsemen units we have. Can't really attack the spearmen across the river, unless I want to suicide, which I only want to do that against the city. Can't really sacrifice units against units. Over here, though, I am almost done with London. This archer's almost dead, but the sacrifice will be worth it. I wanted to promote that chariot, but I knew that I had to take out the city before English military got here. So I do finish off the city this turn, although it is going to rebel, just like Addis Ababa, in the next few turns. Over here, though, we are about to take out the Majapahit city, although it is going to be in the next turn, not this one. I lose the archer, and what do you know it, I am going to lose even more swordsmen, horsemen, sorry, as the city gets unsurrounded before a crossbowman spawns in there, and thank god I got Beowulf, or I would have died. 
Over here, I decided to put out two more horse units to get in position to attack Poland. I took out the Majapahit this turn, and I have almost every single capital by this turn except for one being the Polish capital, the only city that was able to get up walls this early. Good thing the barbarians are helping me surround the city. I got extremely lucky, and thank God for Beowulf's challenge, making this a bit more bearable. I do have two horsemen reinforcements coming, which should make this a little bit... It's going to be neck and neck, you know what I mean? I just... This is, this is going to be difficult. I suicide a horseman, suicide another horseman, and... If I'm lucky, next turn we should be good and take the city. Or moving my horseman unit up north to surround it, promote the horseman unit, although in hindsight I probably could have taken the city if I did attack with him this turn. In any case, I am going to attack with Beowulf, even though he is going to die, may he rest in peace. He does give me enough juice to be able to finish off the city next turn. Over here, London did go rebel on us, but we should be able to take it out next turn, so I'm just going to start throwing all my military units at it in the hopes that we are able to destroy it in the next turn. And over here, we are going to... Oh, what is that? Oh, no, Addis Ababa rebelled as well. It's a good thing King Arthur don't play no games, and we are able to take that city out again in the next turn. Keep that city, and over here, Poland. Oh my god, I am so close to victory. We finally captured Krakow, and all that is left is London, which we gotta recapture, and I'm about to do it right now. That was anticlimactic. I'm actually gonna do it right now. And just like that, turn 80, by the wire, we've won a domination victory on Deity Difficulty. I'm not sure if I proved it was Deity Difficulty or not. I am going to show you right now. And obviously, the entire campaign and the five-minute time-lapse are going to be linked down below in the description. And they're going to be posted on my channel at the same time as this video. Just like that, we've proven that you can win Deity Domination Victory by turn 80 with the help of Scythia and some heroes. That's going to do it for me right now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember, we're trying to get as big as PewDiePie by the end of this week, and I will see you all in the next video.